UK versus Australia. Would you like to study for the OET but can't seem to find the time? Do you need an excellent OET provider who can flex with your needs? Then choose OET Flex. OET Flex allows you to decide when and how you study the OET on demand. Take Italian qualified nurse L for example. She needed to pass the OET to work as a nurse in one of the best children's hospitals in the UK. She was working as a healthcare assistant for over 40 hours each week. So she chose OET Flex with native OET teachers online, in person and timed around her work for five weeks. And guess what? Nurse L passed her OET the first time. Learn more at www.oetflex.com Today we have a very special guest all the way from Australia. <laughs> Uh, so please introduce yourself then. Hi, my name is Irene. I'm a registered nurse working in the operating theater. First, uh, of, uh, of course, from the Philippines and then from the UK and now in Australia. So uh, how was your experience working in the UK? I found it very educational because obviously coming from a third world country like the Philippines, uh, we didn't have um, that much access to equipment back home. Seas and you know, learning in the UK, it was like a whole new world for a registered nurse because you had a lot more, um, a lot more things to learn and a lot more processes. That it somehow made life a bit easier. Mm -hmm. And the, the treatment that they have for their nurses is a whole lot better as well. Why did you leave the UK? Was it the, uh, the original plan? Were you planning something else? Were you looking for something else? When we left the Philippines, I was uh, 26. And mm -hmm. around 2014, it was um, moving close to 30. And we said, uh, by 30 onwards, we'd like to be in a place where we could see ourselves retiring and mm -hmm. uh, so somehow UK did not hit the mark. Mm -hmm. I think mainly because it was of the weather. It was, um, the cold was surprising, but it was more of the gray <laughs> that I guess affected me. You know, I don't mm -hmm. mind a bit of cold as long as you get a lot of sun because I'm a very sunny person coming from I the see. Philippines and all. Okay. Yeah, the debate back then was either moving to Australia versus getting British citizenship and a lot of people um they didn't want to risk that uh that citizenship because obviously it's a it's a security that mm -hmm. once you get the uh once you get the citizenship then at least you got you can go anywhere because you've got fallback but uh I brave to <laughs> to go to once to Australia instead because the longer I stay then the long the less I see myself moving so it's it's a it's a decision of like if I don't do it now then I don't do it ever. The cost of life as well. I think um, because we were in London before we moved, so we didn't think it possible to you know own properties uh, in such a uh, the to acquire properties in, uh, in such a short time, whereas uh, I wanted to get something before I was 35. How do you compare the cost of living between two countries? Are there any pros on both sides and cons on both sides? Most of the stuff are actually more or less the same. Cost of living, I would say, is the same. London was an expensive place to live in, but Canberra is not cheap either because I'm in Canberra at the moment. And uh, Canberra is the uh, capital city of capital. Australia. Uh, living cost-wise, I would say the, the cities, both cities don't uh, differ very much. Uh, the salary that you were given and offered from both cities actually played a big difference because the mm -hmm. offer in Australia was a bit higher. Yeah, it's basically the salary gives you a bit more uh, flexibility. Yes. <laughs> UK would um, beat out anyone else because <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, there were a lot of uh, there were a lot of things that were free for for 
the British citizen. So you have the mm. NHS was completely free. In Australia, it works on a half half basis. Mm. So uh, the Australia has its um has its uh, public sector, which works the same as the NHS. But then you are also encouraged to have your own private health insurance. People chose to just rely completely on the public system every um, mm. tax refund time come june july every year they would have to pay a levi or a fee mm. if they do not call private health insurance and that and there's a certain amount that caps that goes on top of it for every year above 31 that you do not have by rate health mm. With regards to nursing practice, what is the best part from both countries? How do they compare, would you say? It would be the same practice-wise. If anything, Australians are a lot more laid back, I would say. Mm -hmm. So uh, all, the practice is the same and uh, they, they do the best they can at work. But they also know, you know, if, if it's not very busy or if you have a bit of downtime, Mm -hmm. They do know how to chill, stuff like that. And, you know, they try to make things fun <laughs> right. at the workplace. <laughs> I see. And uh, how about uh, Filipinos in the workplace and in the community? Would you say there's a big Filipino community, at least where you live or where you yeah. work? Yeah, actually. Uh, I was, we were actually surprised because we thought all the Filipinos would flock to. It's very normal to see them, you know, in big groups and the likes of Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, and um, mm. Perth, you know, the big four. Mm -hmm. But we didn't think we would know anyone or we would actually meet anyone in Canberra. And uh, when we came, we thought there'd be like a select handful. <laughs> mm -hmm. But when we came and we actually, there, we actually got around, we found that there's quite a lot of them living in, uh, living in Canberra as well. And I guess the original cities too. Mm -hmm. Orange, I heard, has a lot of them. Okay. The, f the thing I first saw about Australia, and the thing I still love about Australia actually, is uh, how it's a half and half of the Philippines and the UK. <laughs> because obviously, when you, were, you, you everyone knows the Philippines, and then when you get around, because I lived in uh, I lived in Las Piñas, and then I worked in uh, Manila, and then you know you get around the party in Makati, stuff like that. So you have the big high rises and stuff. When you went to the UK, it was all old architecture and colonial and formal and royal <laughs> and monarchical, if you, if you allow me saying. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when we went to Australia, it was back to the high rises and CBD. So it was like BGC all over again. But in certain areas, you still get those old architecture that won't make you homestead of the UK too much. And mm -hmm. then obviously the, the culture is um, majorly British because it's a, it's a British colony or we're still under Queen Elizabeth or the Commonwealth anyway. So, so there, yeah, it, it, the balance. Coming from somebody who worked in both countries. If you're looking to move in Australia, that's, that's a very good, I, I would say I'm biased. It was uh, it was a no regrets decision for me, but obviously the situation could be um, different for you. If it, both countries are great and uh, both has uh, both both countries have their own pros and cons, but uh, if anything, uh, it's a very cliche, but it's follow where your heart is. Because uh, like my my husband still loves London. <laughs> mm -hmm. He likes Australia, but he still loves London. And I would say travel is a lot more expensive here than it is back in the UK. Yeah, so um, follow where your heart is and uh, wherever that place is that you could see yourself really settling and, you know, getting in with the community. And uh, if that's a place where you're looking at yourself uh, being for the next 50 years or so, then go for it. Mm. Love is knows best, but you always to rest when staying in the United Kingdom. Mom knows best.